this is how it will be connected so if i'll just write the technologies you try to list the names okay if possible okay. uh, at least let's write the vendor name then technologies they have developed here so vmware so in this overall picture what do you think is developed by vmware or which which part basically vmware is involved Yes, yes, only ESXi for now. ESXi hypervisor. Next here, Microsoft. Windows operating system, so guest OS, Linux. So there are many companies that had Ubuntu guest operating systems. So top leading server vendor HP, Dell, Cisco. What they manufacture here? Physical servers these companies are server vendors this physical server where we are installing ESXi operating system these are the top three market leading vendors in the server business physical server okay. and Cisco Broadcam. these are the two companies who manufacture the switches Top two, so these storage switches, storage switches, vendors, okay, they manufacture storage switches. And Dell EMC, second place, Meta, third place. There are many storage companies. These are the top three. Storage array vendors. So leading technologies from this diagram. So VMware develops the ESXi, guest operating system, Windows and Linux, different companies. Physical server, HP is the leader, Dell and Cisco. And switches, these switches mainly, Cisco and Broadcom switches we can find. And storage arrays, these are the three vendors. Right? So just to know which vendors components are at least used related to our technologies. Fine. And here for network also will enter network switches again, the here only, like storage and network. Network both. switches and storage switches together separate separately they will manufacture fine and vmware is a company earlier they started their own after that it was acquired by emc square vmware company was emc square company and now recently just uh, three months back they sold it out it was they were holding for 10 years then this company was acquired by Dell. Dell was very small company and DMC was very huge. Okay. But still they purchased the founders of EMC Square and Dell were friends, two close friends. And this guy purchased the EMC Square with a lot of debt. To overcome that, like the around six years back itself, they sold it. EMC Square was acquired by Dell. After that, now they are not able to manage their debt. Like they sold the VMware company, so which is part of EMC Square, to Broadcam three months back. Now VMware is Broadcam company. Okay, these are switch uh, switch vendors. Okay, so now VMware is Broadcam company. Earlier it was Dell EMC. Even before it was EMC. 
clear? Just to know the technology vendors. It's a separate company still, but it's a parent company is Broadcap. Okay. The owner, I mean, the CEO, not CEO, even the founder, you can see. We are the CEO. Okay. Just few vendors to know. Yeah. So from NES XR machine, it will be connected to the storage array via this architecture, how it is. And there are different types of storage architectures available from here to here, different types of storage architectures like FC, iSCSI and NAS network attached storage three different types of storage architectures based on the media available based on the data transmission protocols altogether there are three types of different storage architectures we can use from server to the storage okay in FC the adapters cable switches these cables everything are made up of fiber material and the data transmission will be very fast we get very good performance from the server to the storage communication. Even though they will be in the same building, they will be connected just like a two meters cable here, two meters cable here. Okay, maximum all over less than 10 meters within the same building, same room itself, not even building, same room itself, it will be there. All these servers, storage switches and storage arrays. Still, there will be delay in terms of like even milliseconds. When virtual machine is here, and its hard disk will be located here. That VMDK file will be here. So if you are trying to place some file in your WhatsApp, your account, you are trying to send a file to your friend. That will be processed like via internet. It will come to the application. Application will try to save it here. So that communication traveling time from here to here, it will be very fast if it is fiber media. And if you see iSCSI, here we will use copper media. Data transmission rate will vary. There will be minute difference in terms of millisecond. That itself will vary in terms of performance. For customers, whoever is using sensitive application, even that milli or microseconds also matters for them. Like banking, we know the importance of zero. When you are transacting, in a microsecond, there is a communication gap. One of the zero is lost during the transaction and we know the impact right so such kind of sensitive applications will be there even banking is not only thing that we know as of now there are a lot of applications across worldwide their uh, performance or the data transmission rate is very important they'll be communicating like with satellites okay? even there should not be any microsecond or millisecond latency latency means delay there should not be any such delays. Everything will vary, right? So, and NAS still poor communication, but very small companies like let's say uh, hotel or universities that not that critical. Depends up to their business. Okay, it's not like maybe we can say that it's not important. That not important, but for them it's that's their primary business. But depends on their budget, they can go with any of the model. So let's we don't know like where we get job, which kind of client we may work and what kind of storage architecture they will have, FC, ISC, or MFS, whatever it may be. If you go to, let's say, if you're working for a client, it's a paper mill, okay? And if they are using ISC, you should know how to connect your ESXi with a storage array. Physical communication, what are the components involved and logical configurations, everything we should know. If you go to some other company, some other client, okay, critical client, maybe using FC, some other one, maybe using NS. So all three models we should know. If you see day-to-day -day job, the way we work with FC, ISCSI, or NFS, maybe less than five minutes of topping. But to understand everything from the basics, the technology, architecture, protocols, we need two to three days to understand each model. Okay, but technically, finally, if you see, 
our work will be less than 2 minutes only even if you know that 2 minutes task is more than enough but you don't know the what is behind right technology behind okay. so we'll try to understand each and each model how we work what are the components involved how it will be connected so fiber channel any question as of now before we proceed clear fiber channel storage so everything that we use from the server to the storage okay vms are not yet created i'll bring them this cable this uh, sorry this adapter storage adapter cable this sand switch here cable this adapter everything made up of fiber material are completely made up of fiber material so if you see even land cable land phones right there will be small small white cables inside if you cut a land phone wire right you might have noticed very small those are fiber fiber material so inside that the data transmission will flow in the form of light you know that okay, the data transmission will happen in the form of light in fiber material okay so whatever like uh, something like let's say virtual machine is here and its vm dk file will be here okay. so we are in this partition it's the same like you are speaking to your friend and at land phone if you are speaking whatever the word that you speak right the sound will be converted into light and from the receiver it will go via the cable to the destination and at his end again the light will convert into sound that's why he here tells you like hello whatever the word that you speak right same thing here if you processing your photo in your whatsapp whatsapp application is here it's in the whatsapp I mean company's data center right so you send a photo that will reach the virtual machine then it will try to store in its vmdk the data transmission from picture it will convert into light it will go here convert again it will store here while retrieving again same back picture to light light to picture again it will show okay whatever so that's data transmission protocol in the media so we know that the speed of the light is very fast compared to any other media so we get very good performance respect to storage communication clear yeah, why we get high speed here then to adopt this technology if you want to buy ft adapter cables all these things are too expensive the small adapter that we connect here on the physical server back end the storage adapter right generic name yesterday we discussed storage adapter one adapter itself will cost around 30 to 35000 uh, i heard like around 5 years back okay it may be little higher now okay let's say keep it the same price 30000 one just adapter itself 30000 you can expect how much it could be switch is around 20 to 30 lakhs available and sana is starting from 50 lakhs even crores it is available okay fine okay. so it is too expensive whoever has that much budget to set up their business infrastructure okay they will prefer this model so normally we say enterprise organizations will prefer this model now okay. that means top companies whoever has an a budget and a rotation okay they will go for this model Clear? and it is costly costly solution that's why enterprise level organizations will prefer but we get very good performance fine 
now in this fc model fiber channel model these adapters are specially called hva post bus adapter very very important post bus adapter storage adapter yesterday what i have written as a generic name and if it is fc storage adapter it's called hba post bus adapter it comes with an address called wwn worldwide name worldwide name okay it will be a hexadecimal address but it's still called name it's a like i'll just show you how it looks like i'm just uh, repeating this address but it will not be exactly same okay it will be like this format fine worldwide name we'll see what is the importance of this worldwide name is a unique address across worldwide the manufacturer of this adapter will follow standards okay international ieee standards so they will have some standard like first half of the code will be company code If you are trying to manufacture, you should follow IEEE standards. IEEE says you should use one unique code here, which is not used by any other company. They will give you that uniqueness they can find. The next half of the address is serial number of the device that you manufacture. One, two, three, four, five, like that. It will continue. If you find another adapter which is manufactured by a different company, this code will be different for that company and even if the second half matches anywhere let's say it is one company code one device code one another company adapter company code two serial number is one so it will not match with this address right yes. even there are 10 different companies so 10 different company codes will be there let's say there are two adapters manufactured by same company if it is manufactured by same company it is one one next one will be one two company code will be one serial number will be two so if you compare this address it will not match anywhere in the world again so they follow instructions like this and that's why they've maintained uniqueness across worldwide even if there are different companies they maintain unique address unique value So every adapter will have a unique address, worldwide name. Clear? Now it has importance in this trauma, in this architecture, data transmission mechanism. It completely depends on this WWN. That's why we are stressing here. Okay. So fine. How they maintain uniqueness of the WWN address? So our server has two HBA cards. So it will have two WWN address fine, connected to the storage switches. Now, so there is very important, the WWN role is very important in the storage communication here. We'll see that. And these are normal storage switches, storage controllers, rest everything same. Only adapters is called HBA, host bus adapter, and it's called WWN. And just to show you, HBA card. I'll just show you. The if you see the server backend, the port looks like this. If it is visible. So port looks like this. There will be two on the server backend. Okay, you can see separate slot. And if you see fiber cable, I'll just type FC cable. It will be like this one. These connectors will be connected to that port we just saw, right? Just another image. It will be connected. Here you can see clear, clear picture. 
fine it will be connected to the adapters that we have seen hva here those two cables will be plugged in to these two adapters fine it, this will be server at the back end it just, just this module is separately they are showing on the picture it will be a in, it will be inserted inside the server only back end we can see these two ports fine so we can insert clear so if customer using fc architecture so this is some basic theory that we should know and complete protocols data transmission protocols how they manage the data here everything we don't need to worry about it because our responsibility is here and this part will be completely maintained by storage team it's another team responsibility you should know that technology to understand completely if you want you know this theory from our server side is more than enough for us to understand the connectivity and architecture fine now so if someone using fc we know the terminology of the adapters architecture what we are using and how the data transmission happens okay rest of the basic now these are the physical things to make it visible to connect to the storage there is some logical configuration is also needed without that logical configuration even if it is physically connected like this we cannot place any new data on the storage array logical configuration is mandatory fine okay physically they are connected and now we go for logical configuration of the host with storage any question as of now let me know we'll discuss and proceed Hello. Yes, please. Ah, uh, ESXi host ke HVA hmm. adapters so any one time na? Two. Minimum two. Only two na? If, yeah, minimum two will be there. Even four also will be there. Okay, four four uh, H hmm. each one having yes. uh, one double double A number. Correct. Uni unique number uh, same same number. unique every adapter it will have a different address same ekkada undadu oka adapter meedu unna address okay. ww an address worldwide ekkada match avadu nu teeskonu velli ikkade rendu adapters unna ikkada address undi ikkada vere untadu ikkada vere untadu okay okay same ekkada undi I will try to understand how we attach FC storage to an ESXi machine. The logical configuration involved in this thing, FC. Okay. Once physical cabling is done, we have to talk to the storage admin for the storage partitions. Okay. So here, first thing, VMware team share WWN address to the Sandeep and Sandeep create a LAN. They do joining and masking. Third one, we create a data store. So these three steps are involved in logical configuration of the storage. First step. vm means vmware team we have to share the wwn address to the storage team so like you need two partitions each one should be 6 terabyte go into 6 terabyte so if you want to storage you need to talk to the storage admin and inform him that i need a two lans each one should be 6 terabyte and also you need to share the wwn address here there will be one wwn address and here there will be one wwn address you have to copy both the address and send it to him 
we'll see the reason why we are sharing it okay let's say there are two servers two years exam machines connected to the same storage switches now you want that storage LANs like 2 into 6 terabyte LANs. You want it to be connected to the ESXi 1, not to the host 2. You don't want it on 2 for now. We'll see it later. Okay. So ESXi 1 you want. And here also two HBS are there, two WWN address will be there. They can see four WWN address on the SAN switches. When you ask for storage, I want 2 into 6 terabyte cap 2 LANs of each one is 6 terabyte. And you can see four WWN address on the SAN switch. Storage team will connect to the SAN switches to uh, present the partitions. While presenting, they will see four WWN address. And you are asking him to connect to only one host. One host will have two adapters, two WWN address. And he will see four, then he will confuse. That's why we, are, we will send them the two WWN address from the host one will inform him I need them to be connected to this WW address. So thus he can read it from the sign switches because they are directly connected. The WWN address of the adapter will be listed here. You can see from the switch side. Clear? No. Once you share the both, then you need to share both. By mistake, if you share only one, right? Even though they are physically connected, and even he is not minding it. He should know that you, he should get two address from you. But he also forgot and you also forgot either wantedly or un unknowingly, whatever it may be. Okay, it happened. Okay, physically, it's connected like this. And what he will do? Let's say he configured the partition. So he will create a LAN for, so first. Okay. He created a LAN. What is LAN abbreviation? Logical unit number. Yes. Logical unit number. Correct. Uh, yes, Chendo. We need to verify the storage connections. Logical unit number. They will create a partition here. Two partitions as we requested. Each one will be six terabyte and six terabyte. Okay. Two lungs he created. Now he has to present these partitions via these switches. If he just create, it will not be visible. Even if there is physical connectivity, it will not be visible. He has to present these partitions via this path. That's called zoning. So he will log into the switch and make this LUN. He will run two to three commands. Once you run the commands, these LUNs will be visible to the devices which are connected to these switches. Now, these two LUNs will be visible to this adapter, to this adapter, to this adapter, to this adapter, all the four adapters, it will be visible. But you have shared only one HBA. You asked him, can you present only to this WWN? Okay. Then he will do something called masking. Once he does joining, once he does the zoning, the partitions, two partitions will be visible to all the targets. That means four cables are connected. It will be visible to the all the four adapters. Now he will do masking, something like hiding, placing a mask. So we have shared, can you share it to only this WWN address? And he runs some commands again to make it visible only to this WWN address. All other three adapters, it's missed. Now it will not be visible to all the three adapters. It will be visible to only one WWN. Now what will happen if there is a cable problem tomorrow, we will lose the connectivity to the storage. Because you have shared only one WWN is connected to only one WWN. We will, even though there is a redundancy, it will not, these lungs are not visible to the second path. That's a mistake, human error. Okay. 
So we have to share both the WWN address for from an ESXi host. So now these two LUNs will be masked to the both the WWN address. It will be visible to this host. So while sharing, you should be careful. You have to share the both the adapters address. And you will present it to both the adapters. Here. Yeah. And now once it is visible, can you create a virtual machine now? The second step is completed. You are trying to create a virtual machine. It will be visible. And local disk also will be visible. The six terabyte LUN also will be visible to the host as of now. So while creating virtual machine, can I place my virtual machine on this LUN now? No, no. Mask. Okay. Uh, format not formatted with LUN. Yes, it is not yet formatted with VMFS partition. It is a raw LUN only as of now, raw partition. No file system created on top of this LUN. It should be formatted with VMFS. That's what we do after the storage team confirmation. We have to create a data store. So from ESXi, it is visible now. Just go ahead and format with VMFS. Once you call with uh, format with VMFS, it is called data store. Clear? So this is the logical configuration. So out of these three steps, our work is two steps. Share the WWN address and create a data store. This task we can complete in less than two minutes. Even not even two minutes, one minute is enough. But we should understand how it came from, which are all the teams involved, what we have to share, all these basics we should know. Fine? No. So if you want to share the WWN address, it's our responsibility to find it from the HP adapters. So where to get it technically? Okay. So if you're working with VMSI to connect the storage, you need to know where you can find the WWN address. So go to the ESXi machine, go to configure tab, storage adapters, identifier, copy the WWN. From here you need to copy both. Okay, I'll see if our center is up. So in our lab, we have iSCSI storage. Okay, so I'll just show you where you can get, but in our case, HP adapter is not connected. You cannot find the WWN address. We find different address. Select the ESXi host, configure tab, storage, adapters. Okay. Storage adapters, if you click here, you can see all the adapters which are presented. You can see four adapters, right? If you go here, there is one column with identifier. In the identifier column, look from top to bottom. Wherever you see the address, that is the adapter presented for storage communication. Remaining adapters, there are no identifiers, which are used for local hard disk communication. Okay. We cannot uh, use them for shared uh, storage array communication. These are for this adapter, this adapter, sorry, this uh, disk, local disk. Okay, using those adapters, we cannot connect to this storage communication, remote storage communication. Okay, so wherever you find the address, this is the address, but it is not hexadecimal as we discussed. It's something different address, right? Because it's a iSCSI storage. We don't have HBA adapters connected here. Okay, if it is, Okay, WWN address, we'll see some images. And this is also XCSI. It looks like this. But which, other, which one is the latest one? We'll see. Here, yeah, no adapters.
Yeah, here it is. Okay, if you go to configure tab, storage, if this is older view, but still you can see like this. WW address will be in the format, in this format. So we find it here itself, addressing format like this. Fine. And here itself will clearly say type fiber channel like this. Fiber channel and address will be like this. Here you can find them. Select each one. And you cannot copy from here. But if you see here, properly, <coughs> the same address will be listed here. Select, you can copy from here. Paste it in the notepad. And select the second adapter, copy it, same thing. Okay, copy from, from the both adapters. There are two adapters here, copy from both. Fine. In our lab, we are not using FC because it's too expensive, as I said. Okay. But and technically, we can practice exactly however we work in data job, we can practice. So copy the WWN address from this navigation, from this path. Clear? Then inform the storage team. He will create a LAN, then he will do joining and masking. Once it is done, then you have to create a data store. Wait for him to confirm. This will be our work. So select the ESXi host, right click on it, storage, click on rescan for storage, and again, right click on it, storage, new data store, select VMFS. Select the available LAN, enter data store name, name for the data store. Select VMFS version. Select this. Next and finish. This is the navigation how we create a data store. Okay, first we have to rescan for storage communication, then create data store. So go to the ESXi host. Here we can practice whatever we do in day to day job, we can practice it. Right click, storage, rescan for storage. Click on rescan. You can click from here as well or go to rescan uh, storage adapters. This can for storage here also you can do the same wizard will come from this path as well storage adapters this can for storage wait for the task to complete rescan adapters rescan vmfs partitions it's completed now rescan is completed we'll see if the storage communication is configured so and now just storage team has confirmed that they have presented one learn from the storage team so here we don't have separate team. We only just before this lab, we have already configured the storage lab. And you don't need to worry about it, how we do this, because it's completely different team task, same team. Okay. And once you are confident with our task, what we have to do from VMware end, then I will let you know how to work with the storage in our lab at least okay, for your practice. Right, again, rescan is completed, right click, storage, new store, new data store, VMFS. And these two options we'll discuss later, what are these options? Select VMFS for now. Next, there are two LUNs visible, one is 100 GB, another one is 20 GB. Select any one. We cannot select both at a time and format both at a time, it's not possible. Even if there are 20 LUNs. It's not possible to format all at once. Select one at a time. Okay. Select. And here you need to enter the name for the data store. I will enter as the data store 09. Okay. Fine. Next. Select this 100 GB LAN. Next. Which version you want? That's what yesterday I was saying. Yes, this is ESXi 6.5. That's why it supports VMFS 5 and also 6. Two versions it is supported. 
downward compatible that means it supports older version also clear so select always latest version until unless you have a specific reason if you have another host which is es65 compatible and you want the same storage to be converted between 5 and es65 and es65 as well you select 6 if no such requirement select latest version next here this 100 gb lun we can split into 2 3 data stores also let's say 6 terabyte right let's say we can create 2 terabyte as a one data store another 3 terabyte as one data store another one terabyte as another data store so from one lun we can create multiple data stores but it's not recommended okay during troubleshooting we face lot of issues here lot of complexities some other point of time if it is a very worse condition you may need to format if you format we will lose all the data to avoid those complex uh, scenarios in the future normally one lun will be formatted as a one data store okay 95% to 99% people will follow it as of now it's a best practice use one lun as a single data store one lun as a one data store do not split it so you don't have anything to do it here just click on next for some reason if you want to split select 20 gb now again while creating you will see this remaining 80 gb partition you create another data store another data like that you can split otherwise make it leave it as it is click on next and here from this page there will be one interview question what is the block size of bmfs 6 data store 1 mb okay they will ask block size so the format on the disk block by block it will format it will use 1 mb size 1 mb block each fine so summary of the option that you selected finish so you can see create bmfs data store is in progress and it is completed now once it is completed you can see create a bmfs data store this task is completed now where you can verify the newly created data store you have to go to this data store tab you go here you can see data store 09 usable space is 98.3 gb total 900 gb so fine okay. so now this data store is created from the 2 es esxi 240 right while creating virtual machine you can place it on that 100 gb now host see 100 gb partition is visible now if space is not available see any other data stores doesn't have much free space except this but here you can select this for next and finish fine you can place virtual machines inside that data store now so we formatted with bmfs 6 so with this last 2 minutes task only our day to day work so once you share the wwn he will confirm after some time once he confirm you go and create data store on the second host let's say you want to connect it to all the two esxi host you have shared the four wwn address now he has shared this lunch with the both the host Okay, all four WW address. Now you have formatted from ESXi one with VMFS data store, and both the hosts are physically connected, and both the hosts to the storage logically configuration also completed. And from ESXi one, you created as VMFS data store. From second host, will it be directly visible, or do I need to format the same data store again? same format with bmfs again visible sir visible visible okay anyone else has different answer do we need to format again or will it be visible directly okay so it's, it will be visible directly from the second host you need to just rescan this you do it okay second first step you do it just right click on the host right click storage 
directly uh, rescan. If you rescan and go to the data store section, you can see it. So if there is second host, select this host, go to data store. Here you should see it. Right now the host is down. We cannot see from here. If you have another host, you can check from there. Here, if there are 10 data stores, you have to format 10 times. Yeah. So FC storage is a fiber tunnel storage. The material which we use from the ESXi server to the storage array, adapters, cables, switches, everything are made up of fiber material. We get high data transfer rate here okay, because the data transfer will happen with the speed of light. And it is costly solution. Whoever has enough budget for IT infrastructure, they will go for this model. But right now in the market, there are a lot of storage companies came into the market. Okay, competition is increased. Now, for the price of iSCSI, we are getting FC itself. Maybe very minor variation will be there in terms of pricing. That's why many people use FC instead of iSCSI. With a small, same price range, they are getting better performance storage. Right. People will be going for it. So that's why iSCSI usage is very, very less in the market. So FC or NFS only you can find most of the cases. Fine. If it is FC is used after the physical communication, physical connectivity is done, you need to talk to the storage team for this lunch. So first one, you have to share the WWN address from the each adapter on the server and from all the servers. Adapters and ports are uh, Which port? You are calling adapter. Yeah. You can call as ports. Uh, port is different. Like let's say a switch port where you connect. Yes, yeah, similar. But on the switch side we call it as port. Server side we call adapter. Okay, just where you connect. A similar meaning only. Only the device it matters. Fine. So from so share the WWN address from the uh, normally we call server side adapters only we call so get from the adapters and share it with the storage team. Once you share, they will provision a LAN. They will do zoning and masking. Okay. Once it is done, every LAN they don't need to do zoning and masking. Zoning and masking they do only once, and the LAN creation and add it to the same group. So it's up to them, whatever they do, but we should know these basics. Okay. However, they present, once they confirm that it is connected or provision, go to the ESXi host, rescan once, and create data store out of it, VMFS partition. Okay. If there are 10 LUNs, do one at a time. Next time, right now, while creating data store, I have given DS09. Next one, while creating, you have to give the next number, DS10, DS11. So we have to follow existing naming standards. Check what is the existing data store name, give the next number to it in the sequence. Okay. In real time also the same. So the last two minutes what we do is very important that we will be handling in day-to-day -day show. Any questions now from FC? Ah, like if the both learn, the both data stores are crossing more than 80 percent then ask him like ask him one more partition you should not wait for 100 percent usage so once you cross more than 80 percent ask him to create one more okay. four six eight even 12, there are 20 terabyte data stores also. So in real time, most of the cases widely across worldwide, many people will use four and six terabyte nowadays. Even like eight terabyte possible, 12, 20 maximum, 64 terabyte data store also you can create. 64 terabyte capacity as a single LUN they can create, our ESXi will still read it. Okay. Beyond that, ESXi machine cannot read. Even if they create 100 terabyte LAN, ESX will see only 64 terabyte. Other space will be wasted. 
so we don't create that big lunch but normally if needed there are some servers file servers email servers people will be using 20 terabyte 30 terabyte also. 4 and 6 are widely used it depends on that architecture how they want